So let's see here. Okay, here we go. This is today's, right? Okay, so this circle is called the unit circle. It's called the unit circle for two reasons, right? Unit and circle, right? Obviously, you know why it's called circle because it's a circle, right? There's that, that's pretty obvious. My question is, I asked my last two classes. One of them kind of got it. One of them didn't get it at all, which surprised me. My question to you is, how do you describe a circle to someone who doesn't know what a circle is? Like, how would you describe that as a circle? You can't say it's a circle because they don't know what a circle is, you right? You can't. They, they know what round is, so it's round. No sides, right? It's got no curves. It's not like a box, right? It's got no edges. It's symmetrical. It's something 360, if they know what 360 is, good. Okay. Shaped like a pizza. So yeah, pretty sure they'll know what a pizza is. Shaped like a pizza. So here's my question. All of those are great, great ways to describe it. But what if oh they say oh something like this? Or something like that. Those aren't quite circles, right? So what's the difference? My question is, what's the difference between those guys and a circle? Okay, I can make it wider. Can focus up here, eyes up here, eyes up here. Julio, eyes up here. Thank you. Okay. So I can expand these in size, right? To make it bigger. But so it's not necessarily the size. Right? I can make it bigger. I can make it smaller. So it's not the size of those guys. What's the difference? I know you guys know, because you guys know what an oval is. But if I don't know what a circle is, I also don't know what an oval is. So what's a more precise or a better definition to say the difference? No, 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 don't picture this. Picture this, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so a wheel or a pizza. Right? So how do we know? So better question is, how do I know that's a perfect circle? This thing about symmetry, right? A circle. If I cut a circle in half, I have this two same, right? I have half circles, right? So the definition of a circle, the definition of a circle is this. If I take a dot, if I, so the center, right? The center is here. Right, I can have a center over here too. The center is kind of right here, kind of right here, right? Center means you're the same distance from each, right? If I'm in the center, like if I'm the center between that wall and that wall, it's the same distance, right? From there to there, exactly the same. If it's 10 feet here and eight feet here, I'm not in the center. But if it's 10 feet here and 10 feet there, I'm in the center, right? So the definition of a circle is if you're in the center, it doesn't matter which way you go. To get to the edge is always going to be the same distance. So, like, if I go from here to here, how many units is that? One, right? One X, right? If I go from here to here, how many units is that? It's still one. Didn't I get to the edge of the circle? Right? If I go from here to here, it's still one. If I go from here to here, it's still one. Here to here. That's the definition of a circle. If I do that over here, and let's say this is the center, this is gonna be farther than like that, right? They're not the same distance, right? They're close, but they're not exactly the same distance. That's the definition of a circle. A circle says, if you have a center, every dot on that circle, so all the dots around the circle are the same distance from the middle, same distance from the center. 
If that's true, you got a circle. So like the most, uh, the most practical way that I've seen a circle is if you go on YouTube and look up how to build a um, fire pit in your backyard, you want to build a fire pit in your backyard. Fire pits are, are circles. Okay. Fire pits are circles, right? So you'll go and the first thing they say, the first thing they'll say is get a stake or a piece of rebar, something you can dig into the ground, tie a string or tie a rope around it. However long you want it, two and two feet, one foot, three feet, however long. And then you get some spray paint and just walk, walk around the circle. It'll make a circle. It'll make a circle. And then the, that's when you know that's where you got to dig. That's where you got to dig up, all right? Because that, whatever the distance of that rope was, it was the same all the way around. It was the same all the way around. So that all of that, all of those points along the outsides are the same distance from the middle where that stake was. Okay, that's that's how to that's that's how to make a, a perfect circle. That's the definition of a circle. Okay. All right. So now we know it's a circle. Why is it called unit? Well, when you hear the word unit, how many? How many are you thinking? One. It doesn't have an S, right? Unit one. So why do they call it the unit circle? Well, there's one circle, but what's the unit? The unit is from the center to the edge. Doesn't matter where I go, from the center to any edge is always gonna be one. It's called a radius, okay? So this circle, this specific circle, if I start at the center and I go to an edge, any edge of the circle, it's always gonna be exactly one. That's why it's called a unit one circle. Okay, that's why it's that's why it's called that. The center is zero zero, so it's kind of like a circle on top of a graph. That's what it is. Just a regular circle on top of a graph where the middle, the center, is at zero zero. It's the origin. Okay, that's what it looks like. Now we've done some work with that, right? You guys did this before. You got before the uh, spring break. We did this, right? We were when we were doing. Um, degrees and radians, we filled this out. We filled out the degrees and we filled out the radians. And I said, tape it in your notebook. We'll come back to it after spring break when we can use it. Well, today is the day we're going to use this. Okay. Now, do you need this? No. But it's helpful to know that 210 is the same thing as 7 pi over 6, right? You can figure it out, but it takes, you've already spent the time doing it. So why do it again? Okay. So we're going to use this today a little bit later. Actually, not that later. Okay. So where am I at? Here we go. All right. So let's go back to here. So down here, just a reminder, we've used these before. Sine, cosine, tangent. We've used these before. We're not going to use them today, but I put them on there because we're going to use them probably tomorrow. Okay. Just as a reminder, you have them. They are already in your notes, but they're in your notes again. Okay. So let's go to the back side. Let's go to the back. Let's go to the back. The back, there's not much on the back. There ain't much on the back because there's a lot of empty space because we're going to need that empty space. Okay. So what I did was I focused in on quadrant one. Quadrant one is up here. That's quadrant one over here. All of this stuff is in quadrant one. So what I did was I focused in on it back here. I didn't care about the other three quadrants. Okay. The reason I focused in on quadrant one is because chew it a little bit at a time. I don't want to, I don't want to take in the whole circle yet. A little bit at a time makes it easier. Okay. So my question today is my goal today is to find out how to get to each of these dots. So let's start with the first dot. Always start at the center. We always start at the center. So if I want to get to this dot over here, how do I get there? I don't even need to go up, right? I just need to go to the right. Uh, for teacher appreciation, um, do you want a muffin or a bagel? Uh, bagel. Uh, for bagel, do you want uh, butter, plain uh, cheese, or uh, just cream cheese? Uh, butter's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And then do you want orange juice? Uh, coffee, or water? Orange juice is fine. Okay. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so, okay, let's say, so directions, let's talk about directions. We have to talk about directions here. 
Okay, so I get this question all the time because um, Garza is your new, our new high school, right? Our new high school in our district. Where is that? Where is Garza? I haven't been there. Where is it, right? So if I was giving directions from here to Garza, what would I need? I would need two things to give them directions, right? What are the two things that you need? Direction, right? I got to say direction, right? Usually when you're giving direction, left and right is, you know, sometimes left and right, but what, because if I'm left, my right now, right now when I'm looking, it looks like that's my left hand, right? This is actually my right. So direction is kind of relative, right? So we say north, south, east, west, right? So if we're here and we want to go to Garza, I would say go north, go east, go north again, you're there. Would that get them there? No, not quite, right? Okay, so uh, first of all, yeah, so th that's north, right? That way's north, that way's south, that way's east, that way's rest. And what else do I need? You just said it. How far, right? Because if I just say go north, when do I stop? Right, when do I stop? Or when, if I go south, when do I stop? If I go east, when do I stop, right? We need to know distances. So luckily, we have um, street names, right? So we can do street names. Or I can do distances. I could say go a mile north. So in your car, you just set your, you know, you have a speedometer, you have an odometer, go a mile north, okay, turn. Go three miles east, okay? Then go a mile north, okay? And you're there, right? That's the two things we need. We need direction. Which direction am I going? And how far, okay? So if I'm in the center, how do I get to this dot here? How do I get to this dot? What do I need to do to get to this dot? How do we, in math, how do we, what's the address for this guy in math? What do we use when we want an address? We use X and Y, right? That's the address, right? So what's the X and Y for this guy here? One, zero, right? The one means I go right one. And the zero means I don't go up or down any. That's direction, right? How about the dot at the top? What's the direction? What's the address here? Not one, one, zero, one, yeah, zero comma one. I don't go left or right anything. I just go up one, north one, okay? Okay, so my goal today is I want to find the address for this guy here, for red dot. So let, let's approximate. Approximate means come close to, right? So which direction am I gonna go to get to the red dot? Left or right? Right. If I go to one, I'm too far, right? I want too far. So I gotta go a little bit less than one and I gotta go up, I don't know, something like, I don't know, some I'm not one, because if I go up one and over one, if I go there, that's up here, right? One, one is up here. So I'm going to go over a little bit less than one and then go up a little bit, right? That's the direction. Go right, go up. So if we go right, is that positive or negative? And if I go up, is that positive or negative? So both are positive. That helps. Now I need to know distance, okay? So distance. To help me with distance, I'm going to do something we've done before. We've done this plenty of times. I'm gonna make a triangle. Why did I make a triangle? Because we've been working with triangles, right? This is a special type of triangle. Let me draw one more time. It's a special type of triangle that I just drew. What do I know about that triangle? It's a right triangle. It's a right triangle. I know it's a right triangle, absolutely. How do I know it's a right triangle? How do I know that this is 90 degrees? Because when you're driving and you turn, 
streets are 90 degrees, right? They're built that way. Some streets are angled, but streets in Fresno anyway are 90 degrees. So if I'm turning right on Shaw, I'm making a 90 degrees, right? And that's what I'm doing here. I go right and then I go up, right? So this is 90 degrees. We know that it's a right triangle. Good. What type of right triangle is it? It's a special one. What type of special right triangle is it? It's one of those. It's one of those that we talked about in the last couple of days. And how do I know it's one of those special ones? Let's talk about which one it is. We have two types. Which one is this one? Is it a 30, 60, 90, or is it a 45, 45, 90? How do I know? Well, let's go back to my notes. Where am I at? Where? It's at the first dot, right? The first dot above one zero. That dot looks, for, that dot looks familiar. What did I tell you to do before we started this? What did I say to keep handy? This paper here, right? Which one does it go with? Which one does the red dot? It goes with 30, right? This opening is 30 degrees, right? It's 30 degrees. This opening here is 30 degrees, right? Opening doesn't have anything to do with size, right? It has to do with the opening. That's the angle. Like if I were to open this door here, it's open 90 degrees. The door is open 90 degrees. Does that have anything to do with the size of the door? No. It could be a big door. It could be a small door. It could be a this size door. Opening has nothing to do, but it does help with what we're doing, right? So I know this is 30 degrees. So if it's 30 degrees, that means this guy right here is 30 degrees. Pi over six. There you go. It has to be a 30, 60, 90. It has to be because it has to equal 180. What else? I know one more thing about this red triangle. What else do I know about this red triangle that doesn't have anything to do with uh, angles? Yeah, the hypotenuse is one. How do I know that the hypotenuse is one? How do I, how'd you know that, Brian? You're right. That's the definition of a circle. If I start from the center and I go to an edge, it's always gonna be one on this circle. So anywhere, this guy right here, one. This guy right here, one. This guy right here, one. All of them are gonna be one because it goes from the center to the edge, okay? All right, so now what I'm gonna do is, this is why you have all this open space over here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move this triangle over here, okay? So this is how it's gonna look. Cause I wanna do some more work with the triangle, but I don't wanna get it too messy. Okay, so I'm just redrawing the triangle. And this dot is I gotta find this distance here. I know direction right up, but I need to find direction. Okay, and I don't know what these two are. So I'll call this one X and I'll call this one Y. We know it's a 30, 60, 90. Do we know how to find legs, short leg, long leg, hypotenuse on a 30, 60, 90? Yeah, if we don't, it's written down in our notes. We did this last two days. That's why we did that last two days. So you could do this. Right? So we know that which one is one? What is one? Hypotenuse. We know the hypotenuse, right? So we're given the hypotenuse. 
I'm given the hypotenuse. So to find a short leg, I need to divide the hypotenuse by one, by two, sorry, divide it by two. So what is, what is our hypotenuse again? So what is one divided by two? One half. So which one is going to be one half, X or Y? There you go, good. Good. Why is that one the short leg? Because it's opposite the 30, right? Anything that's up when it's a 30, 60, 90, if it's opposite of the 30, that's the short leg. Okay, so I got, now I got the short leg. Now, how do I get the long leg? Because that's what I, that's the only part that's missing. The only part that's missing is the long leg. There you go. So I, to find the long leg, I take the short leg and multiply it by the square root of three. So let's take the short leg. We just found the short leg. The short leg was one half. And we're gonna multiply it times the square root of three because that's what it said to do. Well, how do I multiply fractions? How do I multiply fractions? We've done this many, many times. Both of them need to be fractions. So let me change this one to a fraction. And then what do I do? Straight across, straight across. So one times the square root of three, I can't multiply those. So it's just the square root of three, or you don't need the one in front. You can put the one in front, it doesn't hurt. The bottom is a regular two and a regular one. So you multiply straight across and you get two. Three doesn't have any pairs. Three is just three times one, so I know that one's simplified. So now I know that x is the square root of three over two. So let's go back to the dot. Go back to my original question. How do I get to this white, this red dot? Sorry, this red dot from the center. I'm gonna go to the right. How far am I gonna go over to the right? This right here, isn't it the same here? Square root of three over two, right? Because this triangle is the same. These triangles are exactly the same. I just drew it again. So to get from here to here is the same as getting from here to here. Square root of three over two. So I know I need to go square root of three over two. And then how far up do I need to go? One half. There you go, I'm at that dot. I know direction, both positive, so I go right and up, and I know how far the distance is. Okay, that's the hardest one we're gonna do today. So let's do the next one, let's do the next dot. I'll label this dot blue, it's a blue dot. So I need to know how to get there. So I'm gonna go right, not nearly as much, and I'm gonna go up a little bit more, right? To get to that dot. Do we know what degrees this guy is? 45, yep, so let's draw the triangle. So this guy is a 45 degree angle. So that means the other angle has to be what? 45 degrees, good. So 45, 45, 90. Okay, what else do I know about it? Besides it's a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. What else? There's one other thing I know about it. There you go. Hypotenuse is one still. Okay, so it's kind of getting clogged up over here. So I'm gonna move, I'm going to rewrite this guy over here. Okay, so the same, I'm just, I wrote the same triangle over here. I'm just giving myself a little room. 
Okay, what do I know about a 45, 45, 90 right triangle? Exactly, the short leg and the long leg. There are no short legs and long legs. They're both the same, right? So X and Y are the same. X and Y are gonna be the same. So what do I know? Do I know the leg or do I know hypotenuse? Hypotenuse. So to find the leg using the hypotenuse, I'm gonna divide it by the square root of two. I'm gonna divide it by the square root of two. Okay, so let's go back to our notes. So it doesn't matter if you find X or Y because they're both gonna be exactly the same. So I'll do Y. Actually, you know what? Change these. This should be X. There's a reason it should be X. We'll go, I don't wanna talk about it now, but well, there's a reason this needs to be X and that needs to be Y, okay? So, all right, so it said, take your hypotenuse and divide it by the square root of two. What's the problem there? Square root at the bottom. Well, we know how to fix that. Multiply by the square root of two. So if I multiply the top, one times the square root of two, square root of two stays. What's the square root of two times the square root of two? Regular two, right? This guy is gonna be exactly the same. No work needs to be done there because it's the 45, 45, 90. Okay, so if I'm at the center of the circle, and I'm, how far do I need to go over for the blue and up for the blue to get to the blue dot? Yeah, this is the square root of two over two, up the square root of two over two. Okay. Okay. We got one more dot. One more dot, and we're done with quadrant one. The same. So 45, 45, 90, so the, both the legs are going to be exactly the same. Okay, so now I'm going to change this color to green. What do we know? So let me draw the triangle again. I got a third triangle now. What type of triangle is this going to be? It's going to be a 30, 60, 90. What's the difference between the green and the red, though? Exactly. It's just flipped, right? It's flipped. So take a triangle. If I took this triangle on the board and flipped it around and flipped it around and flipped it around. Is it still the same triangle? Yeah, it's the, still the same triangle. That's the thing here. They just flipped it around, okay? So it's the red and the green are exactly the same triangle. The degrees are in different spots because they flipped it around. So down here, instead of 30, it's gonna be 60. And up here, it's gonna be 30. So I'm going to redraw the triangle over here. We know the hypotenuse is one. How do I find, so first of all, which is the short side, X or Y? Which is the short side? X, X is the short side, right? Because it's opposite of 30 on the green. Y is the long side because it's opposite of 60 on the green. Okay, all right. My question is what are X and Y gonna be? Or do we actually already know what X and Y are gonna be? Y is gonna be one and a half and x is going to be, I mean, x is going to be one and a half and y is going to be three square over two. There you go, right? It's going to be the same distance. 
These are going to be the same distance. You're going to get the square root of three over two and one half. The only difference is they're going to be flip-flopped. The, the short side is off of 30, is, um, is opposite of 30. Well, this short side is opposite of 30. It's going to be down here. So that means this is going to be one half. This is going to be the square root of three over two. So now, how do I get to this green dot? How far do I go over to the right? And how far do I go up? I go over one half, right? Because that's this X right now. And I go up the square root of three over two. It's kind of the opposite directions of the red one. Okay, because it can't be the same as the red, because if it's the same as the red, I'd end up in the same spot. I don't want to end up in the red dot. I want to end up in the green dot. Okay. Quadrant one, we're done. That's the hardest one. I'm telling you right now, this is the hardest one, quadrant one, because it's all new. You're going to see a lot of patterns here. So let's go down to quadrant two. Let's go down to quadrant two. We'll finish in quadrant two. Okay. Okay. So we know some of these dots in quadrant two. The top dot, the top black dot. What is that um, direction or what is that address? Zero, one, right? That one is shared with quadrant one. Now this dot down here is shared with quadrant three. Which dot? Negative one, zero, right? Direction, and now we're negative. Now we're negative direction, right? So let's look at the first dot. I'm going to make it green. All right? It's going to be. It's going to be very similar. Very similar. Not exactly the same, but similar. There you go. So let's draw the triangle. Now, what type of right special right triangle is this? It's a 30, 60, 90. Yeah. How do we know that this guy right here is a 30, 60, 90 as well? You can't say it looks like another one. It looks like, it looks like the green one over here. It, it does look like it, but you, what's another way of saying, what's, what's the proper way of saying why it's a 30, 60, 90? Mm -hmm. It looks like it, right? It just, it looks like the green one from up there. It's just reflected, right? This opening here, what is this opening here going to be? How many degrees? 60. How do I know that's going to be 60? This is how you know. I'll tell you how you know. I'm going to go back to these notes, the first notes we did in this chapter. Reference angle. Remember you on Delta Math, you've seen things with reference angle. Find the reference angle. We haven't touched reference angle until today. So right now we're in which quadrant? Two. This is the reference angle. Isn't this the angle for the Triangle. So where am I at over here in degrees? Where am I at here? 120, right? I'm at 120. The reference angle says, how much is it to get back to 180? If I'm at 120, how much is it to get to 180? 60. That's how I know this is 60. That's how I, because the reference angle is 60. Okay, you've done that before in Delta Math. But that's where we use reference angles. So if that one's 60, that means that one's got to be 30. Hypotenuse, is that still one? Is this still one? Yes, it is, because it goes from center to edge. Okay, let's try to do this without having to redraw the triangle. Let's try to work a little smarter, not harder. Where is that dot going to be? Where is the green dot up here going to be? No. 
It's going to be, Y is, X is going to be negative for sure. X is going to be negative because we go left. Y will be positive because we go up. So let's, let, let's, okay, so let's take a pause for a second. Let's draw the triangle in. Let's draw it again. If we're not sure, always, always, always draw the triangle because it'll help. We know this is 30. We know this is 60. I know this is 1. I got to find X and I have to find Y. I'd rather you have you draw the triangle and get it right than try to do it in your head and get it wrong. Okay. How do I find, so which one is the short side, X or Y? Okay. So how do I find the short side or the long side of a 30, 60, 90? There you go. If I have the short leg, why well, I don't have the short leg right now, right? I have the hypotenuse, right? And I to get the short leg, I divide by two. I've done that before, right? So that means the short leg is going to be one half. So let's go label the short leg, one half. We said that was X, right? Okay. Take a wild guess. What do you think Y is going to be? Three root two, square root of three divided by two. Square root of three divided by two. So let's put that in, yeah. So now X, I have to go on the left, so it's gonna be negative. Negative how much? Negative one half. Negative one half. How much do I go up? Positive, right? Because I go up. That point looks familiar. I had it up here. There's a reason I used green again, because isn't it the same here? Right? The only difference is X was positive in quadrant one, X is negative in quadrant two. Okay. Now what I want you to do is find the other two dots. This one was blue. This one was red. If you're stuck, if you don't know where to start, draw a triangle for the blue. Draw a triangle for the red. I'd rather have you get it right doing it that way and take an extra two or three minutes than trying to do it in your head and being confused. If you're if you're if you're not sure, draw a triangle like I did for green, move it over here to the left and label it and do all that. But it seems like some of you kind of have this you got kind of your brain around it. You got you, it sounds like you understand it. So if you can do it the shortcut way, do it. If you can't do it the shortcut way, there's nothing wrong with it. I'd rather have you get the right answer and do a tri triangle. Okay, so the blue triangle is a 45, 45, 90. Kind of like how we did up here. It was a 45, 45, 90 up here. So the distance is going to be the same since the blue triangle has a radius of one. Same thing with the red triangle has a radius of one. So it's gonna have the same coordinates as the blue one here. The only difference is is X is gonna be negative. Negative root two over two, up root two over two. Okay. The red one, the red is the same angle, the same triangle as the red one in quadrant one. The only difference is it's reflected. It's in the second quadrant. So it's going to have the same coordinates, square root of three over two and one half. It's going to have the same coordinates, just it's a different direction. So it's going to be negative root three over two, positive one half. Okay. 
All right. So the last thing we're going to do is that half sheet. We might not finish the half sheet today, but we'll start it. The half sheet is going to be your saving grace. It's a, it's a cheat sheet for you, but you're going to have to build it on your own. You already built part of it. So you, you get the half sheet in front of you. This half sheet, the blank one, the one that looks like this. So we've already done a lot of this already. The degrees and the radians you've already done. Nope. Degrees and the radians you've already done here. So just copy them, okay? Ella? Not in this class, no. Might be next, it might be next door, yeah. So right now, just do the degrees and the radians. Okay, the degrees and the radians. So starts out zero, zero degrees, zero radians, zero pi. And then this dot here is 30 degrees. 30 degrees is the same as what? Pi over six. The next dot, 45 degrees, which is the same thing as pi over four. So remember when I said it would save you a lot of time, this is where it's gonna save you a lot of time. Okay, having those. The next one is 60 degrees, which is the same thing as pi over three. Ninety degrees, which is pi over two. Go all the way around. Degrees and radians. You've already done this before.
Okay, so once you get the degrees and the radians in there, that's just copying from the one sheet to the other. Now you can put in the coordinates. The coordinates for 30. Quadrant one, the coordinates are three uh, pi uh, square root of three over two, comma one half. Square root of three over two, up one half. The next one, 45 degrees. Pi over four, square root of two over two, comma, square root of two over two. Okay, the next one is 60 pi over three. That's right here. One half square root of three over two. Quadrant two, we did quadrant two as well. Quadrant two. Quadrant two, this is 120. So it's negative one half square root of three over two. Oh, okay, gotcha. The next one, negative square root of two over two, square root of two over two. And then the last one in quadrant three and two, quadrant two, negative square root of three over two, one half. Now, what we're going to do first thing tomorrow is fill out the rest. We're going to fill out the rest of the blanks. We have six more blanks left. That's the first thing we're going to do tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got it? Oh, yeah, 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 there you, yeah. That's the way I would do it. Uh-huh. Makes sense, right? Because you go left and you go down, right? There you go. Makes sense, right? Because you go right and down. It's a big pattern. It's one big pattern. As soon as you get the pattern, you don't have to 